Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, day 25, November 25th. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am tired this morning. I hope you all had a really good Thanksgiving. I had a, a really good Thanksgiving myself. Um, I am slightly hungover, not from alcohol. I only had two cocktails um, before dinner. I was driving, so I couldn't drink during dinner. I, I have a hangover basically from the food and i we spoke about that yesterday and we'll look at it again today and and also just staying up later than i normally um stay up i went to bed at about 11 o'clock last night which you know for a lot of people watching that might be considered a normal bedtime but for most of my time in the 16 years that i've been doing this um this work um i've been following the dosha system where i've been in bed before 10 o'clock at night and a lot of that too is because especially when i'm in india i have to get up at like two in the morning now here in the united states i get up between 3 30 and 4 in the morning and i've been doing that for years now so it's that's something my body is used to doing so even just staying up till 11 o'clock last night was um as, as you can probably hear my voice and look at my face, it's hard on my system. And um, as far as the food hangover, I didn't really eat much before um, I went to my aunt's house. I had something for breakfast, something little for breakfast. And then when we got to my aunt's house, we had hors d'oeuvres and then we sat down for the main meal. And even though I didn't eat really, I didn't gorge myself. I never really gorge myself. Um, it's just foods that I'm not used to eating on a regular basis. And so the body goes through a little bit of a shock and that's what's called a food hangover. And I wrote about that. We're going to look at that again. And maybe that's something that a lot of people were not familiar with before starting this journey. Maybe um, you realized that food can have an effect on you just like alcohol does, especially if it's something that your body can't really process and the body gets tired and, and needs to kind of work harder to process the, the foods that it's not used to. And that is absolutely called a food hangover. And that's what I'm suffering with right now. Unfortunately, it's going to be a busy day for me though. I, I don't really have a chance to super rest today, although I'm going to try to go to bed super early this morning or this evening. My uh, phone completely conked out on me yesterday, and I have been putting off uh, getting a new phone, getting my upgraded phone for a really long time because, you know, of Big Brother watching you and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's literally just conked out on me yesterday, and it's been about seven years since I got a new phone. So I have to go today to the Apple store to get my upgrade. And apparently since lockdown, they do it differently now where you, you used to go in and just get the phone there and change over. Um, but apparently I had to like order the phone and then I have to go pick it up and have them put the SIM card in today. And so some of the interviews that I was going to do, so I was going to do a episode with Mornay from Aquarius Rising Africa today about childhood trauma, but I had to reschedule that with him because this was the only time I could get to the Apple store to get my phone situated. And so that'll be coming at some point next week. Uh, you'll, you'll have that episode with Mornay and me and um, wish me luck because it's Black Friday and I got to go to the damn Apple store in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia to get my phone fixed. But you know, it's just an opportunity to experience peace and calm in a very very, uh, very a uh, frictiony <laughs> experience. Now, with that being said, I am going to try to get onto Signal on my laptop to put this episode up into our private Signal group as I've been doing for the people doing the challenge. If for some reason you're in the Signal group and you're watching this episode on my YouTube channel and you have not seen it in the Signal group, if you could do me a really big favor and just copy and paste it over to that group. Again, I'm going to try to do that through the through my laptop because I can't really use my phone. Um, if that doesn't work, though, I know somebody will will do that for me. So I, I thank you so much. This kind of brings me into what we were talking about earlier with food hangover, with this concept of like food addiction. And I'm not really someone who can really speak on food addiction. That's not we all have some sort of addiction. We all have some sort of like coping mechanism um, that we go to when we're really stressed out or really emotional. Uh, food has not been that for me in this life. But I know Emmy has struggled with it. Stephanie has struggled with it. There are a lot of people that struggle with with you using food as an emotional support. And what I'm kind of hoping right now is through this whole experience, especially having a holiday in the mix where you were kind of let free from the, from the challenge that day to eat what you wanted to eat, um, I'm hoping that there's some observations happening from you guys. And I do, I really actually, my heart really goes out to people who have food addiction because it's, it's, it is like a drug. You know, it's, it's exactly the same thing as people who are addicted to drugs. It's that they're looking for that euphoric high. Um, to cover up whatever pain lives within them. But the problem is, is that we can live without drugs. We can't live without food. And so people who um, 
struggle with food addiction almost have a a, a, a harder battle on their hands. And I've, I've spoken about this before. I, I personally don't believe in like diets because I don't think diets really get to the root of the problem. And I think sometimes diets, especially if there's a lot of starvation involved or a lot of restriction involved, I think kind of exasperate the problem sometimes. Because you see it in people that maybe are a little bit overweight or a little chunky and then they go on a diet they lose a bunch of weight and when they gain the weight back they gain back even more weight and so i think sometimes it's just making the the wound that was there to begin with even worse and that's one thing i love about the dosha diet too is because the dosha diet is basically just teaching you how to eat for your energy disposition but it's not covering things like food addiction and that's the beautiful thing about shadow work in itself is like the yoga practice the exercise the journaling all that kind of stuff it's literally just highlighting where you have problems, where there are wounds, um, where your shadow actually lies. And it's up to you as the conduit of that shadow to figure out what you need to do to heal it. And that gives you power, right? I mean, we have a lot of exercises in this channel, journaling, listen to Con, uh, Kuan Yin. I've given you, prompting you questions to kind of dig a little deeper. But with that being said, I can't fix it for you. No one can. You have to fix it yourself. And I do know I've spoken a lot about my time in trauma therapy. It was super helpful because I had a guide there to guide me through my own healing. Now, you know, it's kind of like that saying you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You know, a therapist, a yoga teacher, an Ayurvedic doctor, a life coach, a Reiki practitioner. These people were all here to give you tools and show you the path and help you hold your hand as you walk down this, the path of self-healing, but it's up to you to actually do the hard work. Um, and for those people who are struggling with food addiction, I do hope that this is um, something that's really shown you where the issues are so that you can continue your journey because I don't want anybody to live this life in, in grips of that kind of an addiction. And I'm hoping that um, you guys see how powerful you are and that there's nothing that you're given that you can't conquer, right? We, we're not given things that we can't conquer. We're given things that are hard. We're given things that cause friction that are tough and suck, but, but we can, we can conquer them. And, um, you know, if there is any like food addiction specialist out there, I know that there are therapists that work specifically with people who have food addiction, um, I, I, I hope that you will reach out. I think Emmy did the 12 step program to work through her active addiction. And I, I'm just hoping that after the experience of this month and then yesterday with the holiday, maybe there's some revelations that, um, occurred for, for you guys, um, you know, to, to kind of show you where maybe there is a weakness. And the reason why people go and crash diets and gain weight, weight back is because the wound was never healed. There was just a band aid put on the symptom. But the wound itself was never fully healed, you know, and so I'm hoping that that empowers you guys to go out there and find your healing, you know, find your sparkle um, and, and using food only that you'll come to a place where food only becomes something necessary to live and nothing more. It's like people say, do you live to eat or do you eat to live? I know for me, I eat to live. I've never really... And to be honest with you guys, like if I'm going to go on a date with a man for the first time, going out to eat to me is like the worst. I don't want to, I would rather go like do something active or like go, you know, go to a movie or go to a movie or go hiking or go, you know, I don't know. I, going to a restaurant to me is like the worst type of, type of date. I know it's the easiest type of date, but it's like the worst for me because I'm not, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of boring for me. And so, um, so I, 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 I understand by saying this that I'm not in the position to really have that experience. But um, maybe if you guys want to talk further about this, I can do a roundtable with other people who have struggled with food addiction like Emmy and Stephanie and some other people and talk about their journey through their recovery, you know, um, and what the food actually does, what that high is when you eat, the endorphins that are released when you eat, the same endorphins that are released with drugs too or alcohol so um so yeah if, if you guys want that I'll, we can dive deeper into that since this is something that hopefully came up with the experience of thanksgiving all right so let's go ahead and look at again 
what I'm talking about with Friday, November 25th. And so, as I said, you might feel a little hungover today from the food and maybe from the alcohol. Alcohol is not something I've addressed in this challenge as this is something that is on a person by person person basis and can be used in moderation. It's up to each individual to figure out what works for him or her with alcohol. However, food can definitely cause a hangover, especially if you're eating foods that you're not used to eating on a daily basis. This is not something to be upset about. If this is something you only experience the day after a holiday, getting more in touch with your body will also make you more aware of how your body reacts to food. Today, we're going to work with this to help you explore more. Now, I think I said this yesterday. I always, every day after a holiday, I always schedule the next day off of exercise for myself because this is this is what happens to me. Um, I, you can probably hear it in my voice. Even though I probably calorie 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 there we go i'm so tired guys calorie wise i probably didn't eat more calories yesterday than i normally do because i'm not someone that will binge um but it's just different foods it's heavier foods that i'm used to eating it's staying up past my typical bedtime. It's, you know, being in that party mode. I had two cocktails yesterday, but that's not, you know, that's not a lot. That's not much. So, um, so, but, but, but my dis disposition is Vata Pitta. So I know from my disposition as a Vata Pitta that this is what happens. And so my body needs kind of a day of, of, of recalibration so it can still continue to break down the food I ate yesterday before I get back on my yoga mat. Now for someone who's more kappa pitta based, kappas are typically sturdier. They're bigger boned, you know, so they're more like mountain-esque, you know, and so typically kappas might be able to handle getting back into the exercise today. So it all just depends on your disposition um, as to how you can handle the day after a holiday. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so you could have done 45 minute kickboxing today. Ashtanga or bar. Again, I said if you are um, have an impacted colon from eating too much yesterday, which you'll feel very bloated if you do, don't do the yoga today because having an impacted colon, especially if you haven't gone to the bathroom yet, can actually bruise your organs. Okay, so just be careful about that. Now, I did put in here if you're absolutely doing over exercise, switch it out, just like what I've done. That's fine as well. You had some uh, Reiki healing as well as possible sound bowl healing. Now, let's go ahead and look at Saturday. Um, you might be doing Saturday today. That's fine. Tomorrow is a really big day. Tomorrow is a really big day. And what we're, you're doing tomorrow for Saturday, your rest day, is actually the crux of the yoga philosophy. And I'll explain why in a minute. So rest day from exercise, self-study, the yamas and niyamas of the yoga sutras. What are the yamas? What are the niyamas? What, what do each of these mean and how can you apply them to your life? All right, so your exercise tomorrow or today, if, if you're switching it out, is to go outside today if the weather permits. See if you can sit in nature for at least 15 minutes. And I, when, I, when you go outside, I don't want you to bring your cell phone. I don't want you to put your headphones in. I don't want you to have any type of gadget that's going to distract you from this exercise. Leave your dog at home in the house for this, these 15 minutes, your kid with their other parent. Uh, or a babysitter for these 15 minutes just so you have nothing distract distracting you from your own awareness okay so see if you can sit in nature for at least 15 minutes while outside see if you can observe all the stimulations around you if you are in a city can you truly listen to all the sounds of the cars the conversations of those passing by the sound of the wind moving between the buildings see if you can really just hear everything around you if you're in a small town or out in the middle of nowhere what sounds can you hear do you hear the trees moving in the wind? If it's cold, is it cold where you are? Can you breathe into the cold? How does the cold feel on your skin? Same if it's hot. Can you observe the sensation of your nervous system adapting to the environment? Don't judge it as too cold or too hot. Just observe. How does this feel not to judge the sensation? Do you relax into more into what is when there is no held judgment as to how you personally feel about it? So judgment is an opinion. So can you go outside, feel the sensation of the cold if you're in a cold climate hitting your skin while you're listening to the cars if you're in a city and the conversations or if it's really hot, you're from the Southern Hemisphere, it's really hot right now. Can you feel the sensation? It's, if it's hot, can you feel the sweat start to form on your body? Can you just observe the sensation of your nerves and your senses without reacting to it? Like if it's cold, can you sit out and feel the cold and not be like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, it's so, so freaking cold. Can you just observe it and feel it as interesting? Oh, interesting. That's how the cold feels on my face. 
Interesting. That's how the heat feels on my skin. Interesting. I can pinpoint where I feel sweat forming on my body without judging it, just feeling it while simultaneously hearing the sounds, just observing it. Yeah. Um, after the experience is over, journal about it. What did you learn from leaning into what is instead of holding an opinion, what it should be depending on your likes and dislikes? And this kind of goes back into something I was talking about a few day days ago where Marnie Alton said, you know, a lot of times we have perceived obstacles because of a past experience. We're now placing judgment on a, a, a possible future experience, right? We do this for survival. But what if we granted every experience as completely new with no held opinion? What? How much further would we go in life if we let go of the bondage from our past and experienced everything as new and as interesting? Yeah, this is huge in the spiritual world, okay? As I said here, this is a huge practice in spiritual awakening. Your opinions are not you. Let me read that again. Your opinions are not you. Your opinions come from your mind and your experience in this life, which isn't permanent. So anything that is not permanent is not the eternal you. So your opinions are not you. Let's think about this logically. Um, so in this life, as Bryce, I can't stand oranges. I hate, I like orange juice. It's, I can't drink it because it's vata. But oranges themselves, I hate peeling them. I hate filling the, um, the, the mucky stuff on it. I hate the way it tastes. I hate the way it squirts in your mouth. But in a past life, I could have loved oranges. So between Bryce in this life and whoever I was in a past life, I have two completely different perceived experiences on an orange. The orange is the same, but the mind is a different experience, which means since they're both different, they're not real. What's real is the eternal side of me that is, that's watching everything happen. Does that make sense? So your opinions are not you. They are just reactions to experiences that you've had. Can you fully engage your senses to experience what is being presented to you without holding judgment or opinions? Next step is to apply this theory to your daily workouts. Can you feel the burning sensation of the muscles working, the breath and heart quickening, the sweat pouring without judging it? When the emotions such as anger, joy, frustration, etc. come up in your workout, can you fully engage in the emotion, experience it, experiencing it, learning from it without judging it? All right, food journal again. Journal uh, questions to ask yourself. Reflect on your experience outside today. Expand more on the practice of being the watcher and not the judge of the experiences you're having. Is this a new theory to you? How can and will this theory change your life and your perspective on life? How can this theory help you evolve through all your traumas and stresses? Reflect on the yamas and niyamas. Which of these principles is going to be the hardest to work on? Can you apply them in your life? List five things you like about yourself. How are these things you wanted to work on going? Can you observe the things you wanted to work on as the watcher, seeing yourself learn from the experience without judging yourself? How can this theory help you navigate difficult situations in your life and the same bedtime routine? All right, you guys, let me know down in the uh, comment section below your thoughts on this, all, all that kind of stuff. Now, because of the holiday, I have not had a chance to really engage in my email yet. Um, I know I have some people from France who've emailed me to get the, co the copy of the episode with Tamara from a few days ago. I hopefully will re be responding to you at some point today. And what I'm hoping we can do, you and me and the people of France, <laughs> um, I can send you the episodes and then have you put it up somewhere on a platform that is acceptable in your country to help spread the word. Um, I'll talk to you about that in the email, though. We're going to figure out a way to work around the controllers, okay? Um, because it's not fair. It's not fair for you guys. And it's also not fair that I can't put those interviews up on YouTube, too, because of the controllers, right? Trust me, I wish I wish that we could be done with all of this censorship for once and for all. But, you know, this, this experience, which is called an experience, is going to take as long as we need it to take in order for everyone to learn what they need to learn. And so we can actually strike that friction and create that light. So until that, that time comes, we're going to get creative and we're going to work together to figure this out. Um, also, before I forget, I had somebody ask about the feet. Uh, we will cover that later on um, in this 
this week. So if you were the person that asked about foot cramps, that's totally normal. Um, we're going to talk more about reflexology and what's actually happening in your foot a little bit later on. Um, and a random question. I've had a few people ask me about my hair, saying that what am I doing to my hair because it looks different, starting to look thicker. And Okay, so yes, I am growing my hair out longer. I have not had it cut in a really long time. Um, purposefully. I have very thick hair. There's nothing different that I've done to it. It's my hair is just very, very thick. And um, because I'm growing it out longer, usually when I go get my hair cut, I have it cut layers put in. So it kind of thins my hair out. But because I haven't had my hair cut in a long time, that's what you're seeing is just the volume of my hair going to its full extent. Um, that's the one copper thing about my body is my hair. I have very copper hair because it's very thick hair. Um, and yeah, and I'm also trying to go, uh, so my natural hair color is like a dirty blonde. It's like a warmer blonde color. And I get highlights in my hair. Uh, I have for since I was like in high school, because let's be honest, as any blonde will tell you, by the time you are a teenager, if you were a natural blonde, your hair gets really dull looking. And so most blondes do have to have like maintenance done where they have highlights put in their hair, unless you're like toe headed, which toe head, toe headed people have white hair. And I have a couple of cousins who are toe headed. My niece is toe headed. Um, and so I've been highlighting my hair since I was in high school and I am trying to just uh, go warm it up a little bit, go back closer to my natural color. And so I'm kind of letting it grow out a little bit and then I'll get a couple of highlights put in just to keep it kind of, um, still fresh and, and looking healthy, but, but more towards the dirty, dirtier blonde color. That is my natural color. Um, still very blonde. Uh, that's the thing, you know, hair color, like skin color all comes from pigmentation. And so blondes, uh, people who even toe headed people all the way to like dirty or strawberry blonde headed people, which are me, we have very light pigmentation in our hair. And so it's easy for my hair to be colored. Um, because when you, especially blonde, so when you get blonde highlights, they strip the pigmentation from your hair. And so since I don't have a lot of pigmentation in my hair anyway, it's easy for them to, to highlight it, you know? So that's why like people who are really have really dark, dark, dark hair, when they try to go blonde, it looks like orangey. It's because they have so much pigmentation in their hair. And so, um, and so, yeah, I going highlight after highlight after highlight, it just gets blonder and blonder and blonder and blonder and blonder. So I'm trying to go back to more of my natural dirty blonde color. <laughs> I was kind of flattered that you guys were all asking me what I was doing with my hair. I'm like, literally nothing. I'm just letting it grow out. <laughs> so um, I do use um, smoothing conditioners and I use spraying conditioners sometimes. Um, I also like once or twice a week, will use like a purple conditioner which most blondes have to wash their hair and um, condition their hair like once or twice a week with a purpley just to keep the tone. It's just to tone it. So it, it cause it does just get dull. Um, and so, um, yeah, I wash my hair every single day. Uh, that's because I sweat like a 300 man pound man with gland problems in my exercises. So I have to wash my hair every single day. Um, yeah. And I do straighten it. I, my natural hair color or natural hair texture is like wavy. One side is wavier than the other side. And so typically I just run a quick straightener through it um, just to make it calm. So that's, that's basically what I do. There's nothing super special. I mean, I, I, it takes me like 45 minutes to an hour to get ready. Um, shower, hair dried, makeup on for the day. So it's not like I'm laboring over it. Or anything most of the time when i'm not filming my hair is black in a ponytail anyway so um so yeah nothing special just growing it out that's it that's all i'm doing is just growing it out so so if it gets thicker and thicker and thicker now you'll get to see why i got layers in it <laughs> so um so anyway i appreciate you guys asking that though no nothing 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 different um but yeah Anyway, um, if you want to know if you're more interested in like the smoothing conditioners I use, I actually get a conditioner from Italy that I've used since I was in my 20s. I found this conditioner when I was living in Los Angeles. So if you want to know the name of that conditioner, just let me know and I'll send you the name. You can find it on Amazon. So anyway, anyway, guys, so um, I hope you have a wonderful Friday. If you are still off from work for the holidays, enjoy the time with your family. Um, to all of our friends overseas, I hope you had a wonderful Friendsgiving and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.